Let's have a look at the trim surface feature. So here I have a pre-made surface that I've put together. You can see if I section by the right plane, it's hollow. So it's uh, definitely a surface here. And if I run this forwards and back, yeah, you can see it is a surface. So let's start dividing this surface up using the trim surface feature. So I can I can trim using planes. So here, select the option, select the right plane as my trim tool. So you can see here is my trim tool. And then I need to select what I need to remove. So highlighting part to remove or the part to keep. I can select both parts, but realistically I want to take one from the other. So let's keep the back end. And I've performed my first trim. Here you can see I still have one surface, but this is the only part that's left. So there are there are other ways that we can use the trim surface feature. So you could draw a surface and then use that as your trimming section. So I'm going to offset from the top plane and draw draw a surface. So plane one, offset by two mil. Let's sketch on this plane. Bring the view up. So let's just draw a line. Okay, like so. It's uh, offset. So, and now let's let's extrude a surface directly through our initial surface part. So, extrude surface. I'm going to do a blind ex blind extrude by twenty mil. That looks pretty good. It's going all the way through. It's intersecting. Okay, so here I have my two surfaces. Let's go to trim surface again. This time using my extrude as my trimming tool and then selecting the parts that I want to keep. I want to keep the back end. And I've just removed the trim tool. You can see what's left trimmed in line with that feature. So let's bring that surface just back. So we can we can continue trimming. So let's trim again, clean up the initial trim surface. So now my part is now my trim surface and I select the bit I want to remove from my original trim. And then I can basically I can I can merge the trims if I want. So I still have two separate surfaces but with my two trims now matched to each other I can select the knit surface, merge the entities and try to form a solid and I can even look for gaps but there don't seem to be any, any in this instance and now I have a solid in place of my two surfaces. So let's section just to show that we are now working with a solid part. And that's it. That's a series of trims using the trim surface tool. We're going to have a look at the surface knit feature in this video, or knit surface as it's labelled. So here is the toolbar. 
and let's have a look at what we've got. So I've pre-divided this surface up into two distinct surfaces. And we're basically going to knit them. So just select the option, select the two surfaces that we want to knit together, like so. We want to merge the entities and we want to try to form a solid. And here we have options for gaps. So there's no gaps. So by selecting surface, selecting OK, you basically come up with a perfectly connected surface. No seam at all. You can see by doing section views through the part, it has now been turned into a solid. But there may be instances where you want to actually cover up for a gap. So let's try adding a gap. So if I go to Mold Tools, Move Face, let's select half of the part move this surface across this is not quite that much by 0.1 so we've got a 0.1 gap between the two parts <clears throat> and a 0.1 gap is pretty big you're going to have very very small gaps in reality but the surface knit feature can actually cope with this so Knit the surface, select the sections again, mirror two, move face three, select the two options, and you can see there are several gaps. So, eight gaps, if you counted the surfaces that are going to be joined, you'd find three, eight surfaces. You change the tolerance range, it will look for surfaces within set range. So here are our point ones. And let's see what happens when we try to merge. So the flat surfaces have merged perfectly, but you can see the curved surfaces. There are, there are lines where the part where the two surfaces were joined and this is because SolidWorks has predicted how the part will join and filled in the missing information let's go back and let's show you what happens when the gap is just too big so let's put in now a 0.6 gap. That's a fairly large gap here. And the issue here is SolidWorks is just not going to be able to compute such a large gap. So by trying to merge the two, you can see that all the gaps now feature a red X so they're outside the tolerance range and we're not going to be able to merge these gaps the merge entities option is available but the try to form a solid option has disappeared so there are there are limitations to how big a gap SolidWorks can try to fill in the missing data It's just something to be aware, aware of. Here I'm trying to account for the tolerance range. But it looks like point 0.1 is really the largest kind of gap that we can put together. But just to finish, let's um, reduce that. 
gap back to point one. And by just having a smaller gap, you can see very quickly, there we go again, we can merge the entities and form the solid and everything works well. And that's uh, basics of knit surface. Okay, so let's have a look at the surface thicken option in the surfaces toolbar. So we have this familiar shape that we're working with. I've got a half shape and I want to thicken it. I want to give it some volume. I also wouldn't, wouldn't mind turning it into a solid and we can do this with a thicken option. So here in the thicken option, we select the surface and conveniently it's selected the entire section. And we can do this because it's one, one knitted section. So we can go inside, we can go outside with the thickness, we can go both ways, we can change the thickness even. But when we press OK, we should end up with a solid part. So you can see on the left hand side, we now only have one surface body which isn't in shot, and we now have a new solid body which is this part on screen. And that's it.